Making underglaze pencils, pastels, and watercolors. This is the recipe. This is a ceramic slip recipe for pencils and watercolors. It's a 200 gram batch. You start with a white firing ball clay. In our studio, that will be OM4 ball clay. A potash feldspar. Look for potash on the label, not soda feldspar. And silica. And as you're selecting silica in the studio, make sure you're getting the very fine powder and not silica sand. It will say silica flint on the label. To those three ingredients, add six grams of bentonite. The bentonite adds dry strength to the pencils. All of this makes the base. To this base, you're going to add color. This recipe says a maximum of 15% color. I've added up to 30% color with no problem. The more color you add, the more intense the color of the pencils will be. Don't add more than 50%, it will weaken the pencils. If you want to make two different colors, you can divide the base into two different batches of 100 grams each, and then add the color separately to each of those. That is what I do in this video. For reference on how to balance the scale and use the triple beam balance scale, watch the video on glaze mixing. Here I am weighing out the three base ingredients for the underglaze pencil recipe and putting those ingredients into a container big enough to hold all of them. Here I'm measuring the second ingredient and fussing with the scale to make sure it's balanced correctly. All of the ingredients for this recipe are in the bins that are between the two counters rather than on the far side of the vent hood. So you shouldn't have to move out of this particular area to find all of the ingredients. Just like mixing a glaze test, you do need to be precise about the quantity of ingredients that you're adding mostly to make sure that if you like what you get, you could repeat it in the future, but also to make sure that it works correctly, because this is still a relatively small batch that you're making. So I've added the three basic base ingredients, and here I'm getting ready to measure the bentonite. Bentonite is the same stuff that your cat litter is made out of. So it swells rapidly when it hits water. It's used as a suspension agent for glazes and also it adds plasticity to clay. So it'll make it easier to form the pencils, but also as it dries, it will make the clay a little bit harder so that they're a little, the pencils will be a little bit stronger before they're fired. There, I was dry mixing all of the ingredients together, and now, because I'm going to mix two different colors, I'm weighing out 100 grams from the base batch. So I'm gonna have two 100 gram batches that I'm using to make the pencils. And I put each 100 gram batch in a separate bowl, Notice I'm wearing a proper dust mask and gloves while doing this. You should always do that. For this first batch, I used two different mason stains. I decided to experiment and use, I think this is lobster orange that I am weighing out here. And so, I think I weighed out 15 grams of each. It might have been 
is probably 15 grams of each, so it would be 30% pigment. So that was the orange, and this is the red. The goal was to create a red-orange. Funnily enough, when it was all mixed, it ended up being the same color as my sweater. I did not do that on purpose. And because this is just 15 grams, I'm being very precise. That little spatula that I'm using there is very handy when you're mixing small batches like this. Here I'm trying to make sure I get all the last bits of pigment out. And to make sure I get every last bit, I took some of the white powder in the bowl and used it inside of the scoop there to release the stain from the plastic. The stain tends to stick to the plastic. And now I'm dry mixing the pigment into the base. It's always easier to get things consistent if you dry mix the materials before adding water, particularly on this recipe because I won't be adding a whole lot of water to it. So that was the first color that I mixed and then I also mixed some black, which because of the type of container it's in, I didn't bother to scoop, I just tapped it out. And that was probably 30 grams of black, looking at where the weight is. And again, just like I did with the red orange, I'm using the slip base to clean out the scoop. And I'm dry mixing the black into the base. And make sure you do this thoroughly, otherwise you'll have pencils that have streaks in them that don't have much color. So be very thorough with your mixing. If a little bit spills, no big deal. As long as your counter's clean, you can reclaim it. Now that the recipe has been dry mixed together, it's ready to add water to it. And I'm getting some water to add to the recipe. You want to add the water a very little bit at a time. What you're going to be looking for is a paste kind of the consistency of peanut butter. Creamy peanut butter, not chunky peanut butter. You can see I am adding just tiny bits at a time because it can trick you and make you think that you need to add a lot more than you do. So tiny bits at a time and then stir well before you decide you need to add more water. And you can see this looks kind of like peanut butter. It's basically just a really thick slip. And of course, clean your tools and your hands in between mixing batches. Since you only have the one tiny spatula, you will need to clean it before you can use it again. If you're working someplace besides Savannah and you have multiple stirring devices, go for it. If you don't have anything fancy to stir with, you can always use your hand. But wear gloves. Make sure you have gloves because you don't want to be handling ceramic chemicals with bare hands. Stain isn't terribly dangerous to handle, but you never know what you might have allergies to. And here I'm adding water to the red-orange and just as slowly as I did to the black. It's not the end of the world if you end up adding too much water. It'll just take a lot longer for the slip to dry out. So the whole motivation to mixing this slip as thick as possible is to make sure that it doesn't take as long to dry out. But you do need to make it into a liquid, otherwise you won't get the color incorporated properly. 
And you do want to really thoroughly mix it to make sure that you don't see any streaks of white or the color of the pigment in your slip. Once you've got that slip all mixed, you're going to want to use the back of a plaster mold, ideally. If you don't have a plaster mold available, you could use a nice smooth board, but it will take longer if you spread it out on a board. You might actually be happier putting a piece of fabric over a board because the fabric will absorb more water than the board would. The plaster is great because it absorbs water quickly. I was washing the plaster mold there because it was very dirty. But if you've got a nice clean mold, it should be fine. And I'm spreading the slip out in a very fine layer. The thinner the layer you can make, the quicker it will dry and be ready to form into pencils, pastels, and watercolor cakes. So get it nice and thin. You can use any plaster mold, but make sure you're using the back of the mold to do this. Don't ever do this on the inside of the mold because it will lightly stain the mold. You've got enough pigment in this slip that it will stain the plaster. Apparently I took a minute to find <laughs> the other mold to spread the black out on. And again, cleaning the mold to make sure that it will work without getting, if you've got little bits of dry plaster on it or little bits of dry clay, that'll get into your pencil recipe and it won't work quite as well. Apparently this mold was very dirty. The color that you see when this slip recipe is wet is approximately the color it will fire to. It's not going to be exactly the same, but approximately. So you can see this is going to be a nice dark black, which was my goal. I didn't want a charcoal gray. If I'd added only 10% black, I might have gotten a charcoal gray. And again, spreading it out nice and thin. I find this particular task very satisfying. It's kind of like frosting a cake. Not that I've frosted many cakes with black, but the texture reminds me a little bit of cake frosting. Once you've got this slip all spread out, you need to let it set. I think I let it set for 20 minutes, it might have been 30 minutes before I could move on to this step, which is peeling the slip off of the plaster. It won't just peel off in a sheet unless you leave it for at least an hour, but I did not have that kind of patience. So I used a plastic scraper. Remember, only ever use plastic scrapers on plaster. You don't want to get plaster in or ceramic materials, and that can happen if you scrape the mold with, with metal. Here I'm rolling out very thin coils. These are intended to use in a pencil holder. So these will be fired and become underglazed pencils. This next size is also going to be underglazed pencils, but these are ones that you would hold in your hand. The, the really thin ones, even after they're fired, are a little bit fragile to just draw within your hand. And I am rolling a fine point on these because I like that better for drawing with. You will, of course, as you wear them down, have to reform that point just like you would on a normal pencil. Now I'm rolling out some fatter coils to make pastels with. These will not be fired and they need to be at least this fat to not break. I happened to form these 
into rectangular pastels because I like to draw with them. Rectangular pastels, you've got a nice corner on it. Now I'm forming the watercolor cakes. And I like this cake shape for adding water on top of because you can kind of drop water on top of it. And just like you would in a pan watercolor set, be able to add water ahead of time and let it soak for a little bit so that you can spread the color more easily. And here I am forming the black ones. Do try to be as neat as you can. They're so much nicer to use if you make the shapes very neat. If they're messy, it's harder, believe it or not, to not break them. I switched to using a metal rib for cutting this very gooey slip. I was being very careful that I was not pushing it into the plaster. So that's something to keep in mind if you decide to use a metal rib. You will want to make enough of each of these shapes to be able to share one with every person in the class. That way you will end up with a set of colors rather than just the colors that you purchased. Once the pencils are done, fire them to between 1,472 degrees Fahrenheit and 1,742 degrees Fahrenheit, which is between cone 015 and cone 09. The higher temperature, the harder the pencil. We've had the best luck at cone 015. I don't like the pencils when they're harder. Unfired, the recipe makes pastels. And for me, the pastels are easier to draw with, although I like the pencils for fine lines. And this was the final product.